Welcome to the ReachX podcast. Today we have with Rusty Hudson, who is the Chief Executive of Diversified Gas and Oil. It's US based, but London listed. So sir, please tell us what DGO is all about. Yeah, so Diversified um, is a pure play Appalachian based company. Um, we, uh, we specialize in the operations, the acquisition and operations of mature producing assets, unconventional and conventional, looking to optimize uh, production and lowering costs and becoming efficient, more efficient in the operations than the previous owners. You've impressed investors to a certain extent and you've in, impressed yourselves as well. Looks like you're about to move from AIM to the main market. So what has prompted that move, sir? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just the mat- uh, maturing of the company. Uh, we've been listed now for two and a half years. Our investor base has become very uh, significant uh, with a lot of big name investors and institutions in there. And really, it's a, it's a move to add to corporate governance, but also to add to liquidity for our shareholders. In terms of headline production, purely you're more about natural gas than oil, but in barrel of oil equivalent per day terms, what is the headline production like? Yeah, we're, we're operating right now at about 92,000 barrels of oil equivalency per day. And what's really uh, important to understand about that is, is that since June of 18, that number has stayed flat. We've seen no uh, declines in the portfolio and have been relatively flat at 92,000 barrels of oil. Over 85% of your production is, is it's, it's, they're all natural gas plays. So in terms of an ideal asset to acquire, what kind of company, what kind of asset is DJ out on the hunt for? Yeah, I think that's a great question. What we really look at is the asset profile. We don't really care if it's gas. We don't really care if it's oil. What we care about is the asset profile, which is long life, low decline, which has predictable production that we can hedge out and have predictable cash flows because, as you know, uh, we're a dividend-paying stock. You're a growing company. As you say, you're a dividend-paying stock. You employ close to a thousand people. You know, it begs to, uh, it begs to answer the, ask the question, what uh, next can we expect from you? I mean, let's not go too far in the future, but what can we expect of you, say, perhaps for the next three to five financial years? Yeah, I think that you will see a lot of more of the same from us. We'll continue to uh, evaluate acquisitions in the Appalachian Basin that continue to add to our scale and our efficiencies and, and help us to lower our operating cost uh, and to continue to increase our margins on the business. But I also think that there could be some opportunities out there in other areas of the country that are considered to be contrarian type assets where we can get the scale and the size uh, with, with the acquisition that we can then kind of duplicate what we've done in the Appalachian Basin. And one final question, you're a US player, but what prompted the move to, to list to London in the first place? And now that you're going places on the London Stock Exchange, including an imminent move to the main market. So what prompted you to come to London to raise capital? It was really just a, we, we saw the opportunity that was going to exist in the US. We, we didn't like private equity model. Uh, we were too small for the U.S. markets, and we took a chance with, with the London Stock Exchange. It obviously paid off. We were able to uh, raise capital over the last two years, over $750 million worth of equity that we've then been able to put to use on these acquisitions. So uh, I think it was more of it was an opportunity for us to raise capital in an area where we had a little bit of a differentiated model, really, and that was a cash flow, U.S. onshore, low-risk asset base that we paid dividends from. Thank you very much for your time, sir. For more details on ReachX podcast, go to ReachX.co.